What is up everybody? It is Wick here and I'm going to show you some things you can look for out in the wild, find them, sell them, make some money. These are items that you might not think are very valuable, but surprisingly have an insane amount of value for what they are. I did a video about three weeks ago showing some amazing things and I said if you liked the video, hit the like button, share it, do all that kind of stuff. And well, the video did very well, so I'm going to make another one just as promised. So same goes for this video, just hit that like button, share, subscribe, do all that jazz, leave a comment and I'll keep making them. Let's jump into it. The first item are going to be these Lisa Frank things and it's incredible how much some of this stuff sells for. And keep in mind with these eBay comps, some of these prices, like the very high ones are not going to be accurate. Really when you're searching for comps and seeing what things are selling for, you just need to compare a bunch, uh, get multiple points of data. Like this Lisa Frank Halloween party favor set from the 90s, probably didn't sell for 8,400 because you see best offer on there. But the point is to show you things that are valuable and uh, a lot of this Lisa Frank stuff is and I've sold at least a Frank binder before. I sold it for $150. I paid 99 cents for it. And there's a lot of newer Lisa Frank items that aren't worth as much. So you have to do your research, make sure they are vintage. I check out these Lisa Frank character hangers that sold for $787. When you see 45 bids, that's a little bit more of a confirmation that these are accurate. Orca, whale, round purse, alien head. This doesn't even look like Lisa Frank to me. I'm used to all the crazy colors, but just this little alien head bag, $700. And if you search a lot of these alien bag heads, Heads that Lisa Frank made are selling in the hundreds. Of course, stickers, sticker lots, uh, the trapper keepers. Here's a purse, panda purse, new with tags. And you can kind of see what this stuff looks like. Here's just one hanger. Who knows what that sold for? Best offer accepted. Here's one of the trapper keeper binders. Uh, vintage backpack, 300 bucks. And it's it's madness how much this stuff sells for. And it's very easy to miss. Um, let me tell you, when I first sold my Lisa Frank Trapper Keeper or Binder that I found at Goodwill for 99 cents, I'm like, I even talked about it in my video. I'm like, I'm gonna be looking for Lisa Frank stuff now. I was at a garage sale digging through a free box and had my camera, GoPro, I was recording it. Uh, when I was looking at the footage later, I saw that I had my hand on another Lisa Frank binder that looked vintage. Didn't even notice it in a free box. It really helps to condition your mind on this kind of stuff so you see it and notice it, especially if it's something that you normally wouldn't be looking for you know, at a garage sale. There's even Lisa Frank plush here. I uh, was so hoping to see my my binder, but you know, it's pretty rare. It's probably not the same one. Oh, here, this isn't the exact one I sold. Like this isn't mine, but this is the same design. And I, like I said, I sold mine for 150 bucks and I paid a dollar for it. Great return on my investment. Even Lisa Frank watches, beach towels. There was a lot of Lisa Frank products and I think because of that, they're fairly common to come across. So keep an eye out for this stuff. Awesome. Here is another item vintage that I've been looking for now for years. I have not found any. I actually might have some in my house. I had some when I was a kid. I have a box of all my old papers and drawings I had when it, as a kid. I think they're in the basement. I need to go through them and see what scratch and sniff stickers I have left. I was the type of kid that didn't like to consume my stuff, so I would save it. There's, there could very well be some still on the paper never used. But anyway, they're scratch and sniff stickers. Does anyone remember these? If you're not familiar with them, they're just stickers. You take your thumbnail and you scratch them. They give off a scent of whatever they're supposed to smell like, usually a food item. And what's crazy is I remember coming across some of my scratch and sniff stickers like 10 or 15 years ago, I think when I was going through boxes and stuff, and I scratched one and it still had a scent. Uh, it's crazy. I know I had a bunch of them. Teachers would put them on like your homework if you did a good job, that kind of thing. But look at this, $610. Here's some rolls of them, uh, $578. Of course, it's going to depend on the sticker set. Here's some from the 80s. Now, I look at this sheet and I can recognize some of them, like the ice cream cone, the watermelon, the pickle. Definitely remember that one. It's crazy. I can still smell this stuff like when I think about it. But apparently there's some big collectors of this stuff. Uh, we got spaghetti, meatballs, hot dogs, all this stuff. Uh, of course, sealed is going to do well. Here's stinky stickers. I don't know if I want those. Skunk. Actually, now that I think about it, I had a skunk as well. Can you imagine if you had the insight to buy these up in the 80s and save them? You're probably getting these things for like 49 cents. You could be a millionaire right now and scratch and sniff stickers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no one's going to really, you know, have that insight and wait, what, 30 plus years to sell them. And this is the type of thing that you go to a garage sale and someone just has a box of these sitting out uh, priced like a dollar and you get hundreds of them because a lot of people don't realize the value of this stuff. And it becomes easier to find like a box of gold worth 
thousands of dollars, you're probably not going to find that at a garage sale. Somebody's going to see that and be like, oh, this is a box of gold. This has value. Let's look this stuff up or figure out the value. Stickers, they're just going to throw out. Uh, estate sale, you can find these in drawers, thrift stores in the craft section. They could be anywhere. Uh, big money. And of course, we're looking at the highest comps. Again, you just keep scrolling down and it keeps going down, but still in the hundreds, even if you're finding these for you know a dollar and selling them for $50, it's good profit. You do not want to miss them. And here's something I learned about a while ago as well. And uh, I just can't believe that some of this stuff holds value. That's Lip Smacker, like the vintage lip balm, chapstick stuff. I remember this, you know, growing up being around. I don't know if people use, li use this stuff or they collect it or what. I can't imagine it being safe to use after all these years. But some of these go for a lot of money. Uh, you can see in the hundreds, Razzleberry. Um, here's a big lot for 200. Uh, Orange Pop 203, that one looks like it's probably from the 80s even. The cotton candy ones, and you know, I don't know a lot of places that are going to sell these, even sealed, just because, you know, it doesn't seem healthy to sell something you're putting on your lips that old, at least to me. But maybe in an estate sale, you know, if you're going through someone's drawers and you, know, you happen to come across one of these, it's worth picking up. Here's where you see personal listing for eBay or uh, name here. No one else may purchase. Pretty sure that's against eBay rules. People still do that. It's kind of crazy. It used to happen all the time, you know, in early eBay days. And again, most of these you find are probably not going to be worth, you know, four or five hundred dollars they could be uh, but a lot of them are going to be more basic ones that you're probably getting like anywhere from 20 to 50 dollars for but still i don't think you're going to be paying much for vintage uh chapstick or lip balm uh, if you come across it let me know in the comments also if you've found any of this stuff i'm talking about today you know some of the stuff i'm talking about today i've found and sold some of it i have not i've been looking for it keeping an eye out for it of course going to garage sales thrift stores is all about the hunt for me i just want to find these cool items that are valuable just because you get that adrenaline rush of finding it of course the money is great too i'm not gonna lie look for vintage cap guns these are big money as well certain ones of course from the 30s and 40s a lot of the cast iron ones are good money. Certain sets, of course, new. Big money. Here's a Mattel like rifle cap gun. Pretty cool. $550. Again, these are some of the more high-end special ones. Well, there's an Uzi. That's kind of cool. But still, there's all kinds of them that come from the 80s. The plastic ones you'd find in the dollar store. Still selling for $25, $30. And the older ones, they're not going to have the orange tips. I'm pretty sure it's a rule on eBay. You have to have some sort of orange tip. I think you just put orange tape on it when you're selling it. I haven't found enough you know cap guns and usually the ones i find are newer and they do have the orange tip so i haven't you know had to research that but if i was selling a realistic looking cap gun i would just put some orange tape on it or something just in case uh just to stay within those guidelines i know the manufacturers now have to put orange tips on all the guns that are made here's a nice cast iron one 381 uh, the holsters as well i should also mention that the vintage caps i have sold a lot of vintage caps over the years like the roll caps that go with the guns uh i found a box new one time i think it was like a dollar two dollars at goodwill i sold it for 30 bucks so money in vintage caps as well i don't think they make toy cap guns anymore right any newer ones at this point of time oh look at this space cap gun that's really cool i would if i found something like that i wouldn't be able to sell it i would just have to you know put it on a shelf but not just cap guns bb guns collectible vintage bb guns are very good to find i know at least around here this is one of those items that everybody is looking for and there's people that just go to garage sales they walk up do you have any vintage BB guns or air rifles? Someone says no, they walk away. They don't even look at anything else. It's like video games. And of course, if you're finding some of these original Daisy BB guns from the 30s, look at that, over $2,000. Uh, a lot of these are breaking $1,000. Again, something that always depends on the model. You have to look it up and do your research. But in general, even guns from the 80s and 90s, if you're getting them cheap, can still be you know, significantly good profit, 40, 50 bucks. I got a bunch of air rifles last year on the side of a road at a sale I just happened to run into. And they're still selling for 40, 50 bucks. A lot of them are just from the 90s. Rifles, pistols. I mean, you can go all the way down the list. Like we're up here in top tier stuff. Zoom down here and they still, you know, in the hundreds. I feel like you just have to be one of the first people at a garage sale though to get the BB guns. I'm always trying to improve my glassware, mugs, glasses, all that kind of stuff, dishes, knowledge. And here's Fire King. The Fire King stuff is 
really good to pick up and you can kind of see the style it is in these pictures they got this kind of look to them usually pretty colorful like these jade ones here's a multi-colored uh set here even the plain white ones like this 235 dollars they're kind of easy to spot once you you know get into the swing of looking for them here's a nice set from the 50s colorful and this is something i learned about because of my channel years ago I was at a garage sale recording and I passed up a set of orange ones of these somebody pointed out and from then on out I've been looking for them. I picked up some singles here and there, um, nothing particularly great, but I'm always on the lookout for a nice set like this. They even make some of the like cartoon, like Snoopy stuff. I believe Garfield I've seen. I'm just scrolling here, kind of showing you kind of what's here. Even uh, here's a, a Coke one, Burger Chef advertising, people using the advertising keyword is always good when you're selling stuff like this, but it just pays. And they have kind of a thick feel to them as well. So. Once you find some, once you touch them and see them, it kind of sticks in your brain on what to look for. Of course, we have to mention Starbucks mugs if we're trying to be talking about any mugs because Starbucks mugs, some of them are insane value. A lot of the good ones you're going to find, they're going to be in the $100 to $200 range, not up here, you know, in the... <laughs> $500 range like some of these are showing and a lot of people are new to this type of thing you know, I show $560 Starbucks mug next thing you know they're in Goodwill buying every Starbucks mug they see which could be good but not everything you know is going to have the value I'm showing here in the pictures this is just you know the elite stuff I think it's always worth checking out any Starbucks mug you see though especially if it's like a destination mug even the plain ones if you can find you know enough of them people just want to buy them to have and use uh, not collect like some of these but a lot of people over the years they just buy these you know usually at starbucks for probably 20 or 25 dollars just to have they don't collect them and then one day at a garage sale they put them out for a buck they don't want them anymore it just so happens that was a collectible one you know sells for 100 200 300 bucks and you pick it up and what was really cool about the last video where i was showing the same types of stuff to look for if you didn't check it out i'll be linked at the end and in the description but there's a lot of people commenting that they found stuff even i think there was somebody that the next day they just watched my video went out and found like a couple things that i mentioned in that video i think that's really cool uh, when people find that stuff another thing that you can find very cheap that a lot of people put out at a garage sale and they don't know the value are some of these older casio digital watches and any brand for that matter a uh, digital watch like this from the 80s 90s people like the style and yeah they'll pick them up like these casio data banks here's one for 650 uh here's one for 545 tank watch i'm not sure exactly what that is of course you got the calculator watches years ago i made a video about calculators to look out for and I, I mentioned the calculator watches very collectible people who like style are you know wearing these watches they want to wear them as daily watches here's a thermo scanner a vintage casio watch don't know what that's about you know a lot of these like this one's selling for parts who knows what it's sold for because it's best offer but yeah even if you find this stuff and it doesn't work it's so sought after that people you know will buy them for parts pay a high price people who know how to fix them and these aren't gold they're not silver uh, like a lot of watches they've just got the the basic leather straps and it's all about a style thing right a lot of these sell for more uh, than some of the gold watches would and i want to keep mentioning like not every digital casio watch is going to be big money but there's a lot of them they're going to be selling anywhere between 20 to 100 bucks i've sold quite a few of these casio digital watches i think the most i've sold one for is about 120. here's a casio pac-man watch very cool uh, it just keeps going i just i love the look of these if i found one i like it'd be hard to sell as well because i just want to keep it and wear it i want to show you some of these seiko watches as well real quick uh this seiko is a great watch brand clock brand i've sold a lot of seiko clocks and some watches you got the james bond set here uh, very lucky if you'd ever find that in the wild especially new or with the box and everything they're definitely out there uh, they have their own calculator watches as well. Here's some sort of Star Wars watch, really cool. Here's one of the James Bond watches, the astronaut watches, uh, the TV watches with receiver, the James Bond one. Look at that, $760 with 47 bids. When you think about it, that was kind of ahead of its time, right? You know, you have smart watches that you can watch video on now through the internet, through Wi-Fi. But back in the 80s, 
early 90s, you know, if you had a, a TV on your wrist, it was pretty impressive. The astronaut watches, Seiko, really cool looking, 455 with 40 bids. World time, now see, I remember these with like the, the picture of like the world, like the United States on there and Asia and all these different time zones. I just remember this stuff around and you probably pick up a watch like that for 30 bucks, 40 bucks at JCPenney or something like that back then, right? But the cool thing about these watches are they can literally be anywhere and a lot of people that are having garage sales, estate sales, uh, they don't realize that people are paying high amounts of money for these because of the style, uh, the vintage look, the rarity, the collectability. They're just like, oh, this old digital watch, no one wants this, it's not gold, it's not silver. And again, most of the watches you're gonna find, $40, $50 range like this, but still you're probably getting them cheap, you're making good money. But there it is everybody, that's the video. I hope you learned something today. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button for me, make sure you're subscribed, leave a comment if you found any of this stuff. Give me some new bolos, I'd be happy to know some. I have thousands of items in my head that I've learned over the last 10, 11, 12 years I've been doing this. So if enough people like the video, I'll just keep on making these. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, flipping underscore junk. And this has been Wick. Until next time.